That would be fantastic. You just have the one card, you carry it around, and you can use it anywhere. So I want, I want to like kind of imagine with you, if you could, could think of a post-Fed world, right? What do you see the future of uh, gold and silver and, and precious metal as a currency as it evolves in a digital market? Well, I think I think that is the picture um, that you have. You have your debit card, which is attached to a pool account. Um, that you know, like every night, it, they do the the sweep of your your balance into uh, gold or silver or some balance. Uh, or you know even into other mutual funds or whatever it should be the ultimate freedom to invest your money automatically the way you want to and for the gold and the silver what i see is if you if you want to actually withdraw from the account to redeem your gold or silver that ideally it would be in something like the shiner silver cards Right. I mean, you know, we also do have the gold. So you could get well. them in the mail or something like that if you wanted to. Yeah, they're very easy to, to ship. I send them through the mail all the time. That's how I. So is there them. is there anything in your mind? Because for some people, I think this sounds kind of science fiction. The idea that something as solid as metal could be transferred as easily as digits. Um, but I'm I, from where I'm sitting. There's nothing preventing that from happening except the state. Exactly. That's that's it. That's all there is. So, like, a common objection that I get, and I think you solved this problem, frankly, the common objection I get to gold and silver currency is there's not enough in the world to use as a currency, that it couldn't be denominated in small enough amounts and need to this currency. Right, right. And, and with this, um, here's a good example. This is a 20th of a gram of gold, and it's a very tiny writer. But Rome couldn't have been that. No, they probably no, didn't have the technology. No, and the, and the plastic laminate card, um, that also, you know, is a fairly recent uh, discovery. But it, but yeah, it's, this is something that, you know, maybe 30 years ago could have been done. Um, you probably would have had to do it on a larger scale because, you know, the like the laminating machines would have cost more, and the laminate plastic material you would have had to buy in, in such a large bulk. But now. Um, if, if you look, you can get like one card, just the, the plastic laminate, for as low as like three and a half cents. So, so yeah, each card not only has the value of the metal, but it's got you know, the paper and it's got the, the plastic. So the, the, the last thing I wanted to ask you was, you made a comment yesterday that I've been making for a long time, and people have been telling me that I'm crazy for saying. <laughs> And that is, if monetary policy made any sense at all, paper would be worth cents and coins would be worth dollars. That, yeah. that, it, that it's opposite, that it's, that it's turned on its head. Exactly. So, it's, so why is that? Well, it's so much, you know, if you, if you look at how much easier it is to counterfeit, it's so much easier to counterfeit a paper note um, than it is to counterfeit a, a coin. A coin is, is more solid, you can tell, and it has the actual value in it. Assuming that it's made of a precious metal or or some commodity metal that, that has enough value. Or even now, like they, they're saying pennies cost 2.4 cents to mint and nickels cost 11.2 cents to mint. So counterfeiting pennies and nickels is actually much more difficult than counterfeiting a white dollar bill. Well, it, it's not cost effective. Yeah. Right. Um, but really, if, if somebody's counterfeiting uh, you know, a 10 cent note, are you really going to care if somebody if somebody hands you one in a in a in a, a bunch of change and some some notes? It's like when people put Canadian coins in a tip jar and nobody notices. That's a really good comparison. Yeah. Um, well, and of course the Canadian coins, depending on the, they might be worth more. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, but but you know it's it's not a big deal because it's such a small amount that it's not a a real loss, um, and it's also something that. You just pass on. Um, when you deposit it in the bank, they just they're gonna count it as a penny, even right. if it's Canadian or Mexican or whatever. Because it'll still be copper or whatever. Yeah, and they're just it's just easier. It's it's more cost effective just to ignore the loss than it is to try to do something about it when it's when it's values that are that small. Um, so yeah, it it makes sense as well if you if you do the 
comparison in the cards, uh, if you've got a one ounce coin of silver, you know, that's worth about 40 bucks. One ounce coin is a pretty good coin too. Yeah, it's it's big, it's it's heavy, it's impressive. It's about the size of uh, like a 50 cent piece in US change, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, about there. Um, but you know, so that's that's the thing that you would carry around if you're going to make a larger purchase. Whereas you would carry these around, and these are closer to the paper form factor. These are are at the lower end. I've already I've already there. done it here in the vendor room. I bought a T-shirt with an ounce of silver. The T-shirt was only twenty dollars, and they gave me change in smaller denominations of silver. Yeah. So there was it was there was no cash in the transaction at all. Excellent. Um, so uh, before we go, is there anything that you would like to just sort of say as a message to our viewers, sort of as, a, as your core message, and then if you could share with them where they can find you online or how they can find more information uh, about Shire Silver? Yeah. Um, well, it's it's all about using the sound money. We, we want to, we're going to need to do it gradually. Um, you know, we can't just come in and, and tear down the government system, but, but if the more people start using it, the more they use it, the more people are going to be able to use it, and we can grow organically this sound money system in competition with the Fed, and eventually uh, the Fed will just go away. Because um, no one will want it. It'll be no one will want it, dollars. and we'll, we'll have educated the public enough that legislation will will be done, and we'll, we'll get out of the way when the time comes. Um, I don't know that, <laughs> but that's wishful thinking. Well, it, it, that you know, it goes back to the, the model of the, the mass distribution. It's the same thing as like with drugs. Um, they can't stop drugs yeah. because it's massively distributed, and the profits are there, and people want it. Right. And the same thing with the Shire Silver model of putting the actual value in the card. Um, because you said that they could they could theoretically shut you down. Yeah. They Shire could. Silver wouldn't go away. Right. The same way that they could arrest the the owner of mega uploads, but online piracy is not going away. Exactly. Yeah, and the more people do it, the more people make their own version of this and start promoting it in their area, uh, the safer we all are because they just it'll get to the point where they'll finally realize, hey, this war, you know, to, to use the analogy, the war on drugs, is not working, and it can't work. Um, freedom is going to win, and they can't stop it. All they can do is delay it. And the same thing with the return to sound money. They can delay it, but they can't stop it. It's already at the point where enough people know about it Enough people are doing their own version of this that the idea can't be stopped. Absolutely. I'm going to take my Shire Silver that I bought from you here at this conference and I'm going to give it to people as gifts. Yeah, that's so a great idea. So they'll be turned on the same way you were yeah. and we'll see more of it in the future. So Ron, it's a nice, nice having you on. Uh, ShireSilver.com. ShireSilver.com.